everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title of today's video, I am going to be just doing a cozy get ready with me Q&A because I haven't done just like a question Q&A video in a while and I wanted to do one. I'm sorry, my camera just put the setting infant on the camera right now. I guess because I have my hair swaddled up right now, it said infant. <laughs> Excuse the noises, I do have the window open because it's really nice and windy outside right now and I really like the natural breeze coming in. So I asked you guys on Instagram last night to ask me questions for me to answer during this video and I'm also going to be showing my daily makeup routine in this video and doing my nails in this video because I have not been taking the best care of myself. Um, the past like week or so I have not been sleeping well and it's just been a very bad week for me so I figured today I would treat myself after I do some work stuff. I get asked all the time to show my daily makeup routine and while I feel like my makeup is not like amazing, um, I figured I would still show you guys since I always have people asking. In the shower, I always use some type of face cleanser just for like dry skin. And then after I get out of the shower, I use the Cetaphil hydrating lotion. I am looking into getting better skincare for myself because this has not really been working as well. I have pretty dry skin. Um, it feels okay right now, but it's been pretty dry lately and it does affect the way that my makeup goes on. I already did this before I started the camera, but I used the e.l.f. Hydrating Primer Serum and I put that all over my face before I put on my foundation and it, I've noticed a huge difference in the way my foundation goes onto my face when using this stuff. It is so nice. It really hydrates my face. It makes my pores go down. And I also wanted to say that a lot of these products that I am using, I've almost run out of them. And there are some products that I'm planning on switching over um, to different brands because I didn't know that they were brands that still tested on animals. Like Maybelline here is not cruelty free and I did not know that, which sucks because I do love Maybelline. But once I completely run out of these like foundations and stuff, I'm planning on switching over to a different brand. So keep in mind, a lot of this stuff is stuff I'm just kind of finishing off with until I switch over to different products. So if you guys would like to see me do a video in the future with like new cruelty free products, definitely let me know. So like I said, the first step that I do is my foundation and both of these are almost empty. Um, I use usually use just one or the other. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation. This is the matte and poreless one and then this is the dewy and smooth one. I do prefer the dewy and smooth because it makes my face look really glowy. Um, this is in the color Fair Ivory and this other one is in porcelain. I just get their lightest shades because as you can tell, I'm pretty pale but both of them blend into my skin pretty well. And like I said, I'm almost out, so we'll see how much comes out. Okay, we've got enough. I just kind of pour some onto my hand and I use a wet beauty blender and then I just pat it into my face. And as you can see, it blends into my skin pretty well. It's a little dark. So the first question I am going to answer is from Kit Levin and it says, how are things going with your spiritual journey as a witch? I miss the witchy content. So since moving into this house, I actually have not done any type of like witchy stuff. Like I have not done any tarot readings on myself. I have not done anything. That's mainly because I am not in the mental headspace too. And I like to be in like a decent mental headspace when I do tarot readings and stuff because I feel like if you're overly emotional or overwhelmed, it affects the reading a lot. And I've just been really overwhelmed since moving into this house. Honestly, like just being like real with you guys, this house is a lot more expensive than my apartment was. It's like a thousand dollars more a month than I was spending before. So before I had like a thousand plus dollars to have spending money on myself and all of that stuff. Now I kind of have to spend it all on just like bills and my animals. I've just been working like 10 times harder than I was before at pushing out content on all of my channels. And that's kind of made it where I don't have time to really do stuff for myself. And while that may be a bad thing, um, it doesn't really bother me. Like I don't mind working. Sometimes there are some days where I don't want to be working. I'm someone who likes to always be doing something um, at home. So I don't mind working as much as I am. That's kind of made it where I haven't had time to even set up my altar. I wanna be in the right headspace before I start um, delving back into like the witchy stuff. So I promise I will be doing more witchy videos in the future of me like setting up my new altar, maybe I'm not sure, um, and some witchy boxes and stuff that I have been sent 
will be opened soon. I just haven't really had the time and mental headspace to. Okay, so there is my foundation. And then I use the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. This stuff is intense. I'm almost out of it. So I don't even know if any of it's gonna like show up on my face, but this stuff is so, so thick. And I think I'm gonna try their foundation line as well because their concealer is so good that I really want to try their foundation. So love e.l.f. It's cheap and it's good. So I just kind of put it on these areas and then once again, I blend it in. The next question is from Abby and it says, how do you know when it's time to move on from a relationship? That's a great question, honestly. And I don't think I have the answer to that because I don't even know the answer to that myself. Um, I have a hard time moving on from relationships that are bad for me, better myself. So honestly, um, if anybody has the answer for that, feel free to comment down below, but I do not have an answer for that. Anne Helsing asked, how long does it usually take you to do your makeup? It's gonna take longer for me today, probably because I'm just like chatting and talking while I do it. But normally if I'm not distracted by anything, it takes me just like 15 to 20 minutes to do like a full face of makeup and then maybe 30 minutes to do my hair. Um, so all together, like all together, it would take me 30 minutes to do my makeup and hair. I just kind of got it down to a science now and I know um, how to do makeup on myself. So it doesn't really take me too long to do it. There is the concealer. I mean, I'm breaking out in some places as you can see, but it covers it up pretty well. So next I take my foundation. Once again, this is Maybelline. I will not be using this anymore. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Blush in Berry. And it's very pigmented and it's a super, super dark pink, but I absolutely love this color. So I like to pile on a lot of blush. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, like I always put tons of blush on and then I kind of blend it out later. But like, as you can see, I literally just like pile it on. I put it on my nose. More blush, the better. Like I love blush. I used to not wear it at all, but now it's like, I feel empty without wearing <laughs> blush. Like I love it. I literally just like pile it on my nose and everything. I kind of make like this oo <laughs> if that makes sense, like a oo line, like this. And then I take a bronzer brush and my e.l.f. bronzer blush duo. I've had this for so long now and I just take this bronzer and I do kind of bronze a little bit, just contour forehead and on my cheeks and then on my neck. So since I'm so pale, this bronzer kind of gives me a nice glow that I normally would not have. Annie Turner asks, who is your favorite Disney princess? That's a really good question. Honestly, I love Disney princesses, so it's hard to choose a favorite, but if I had to choose a favorite out of like the old, like classic Disney movies, it would definitely be Ariel from The Little Mermaid. But honestly, it's really hard for me to choose because I love like Mulan. I love so many different Disney princesses. But if I had to choose from like the newer movies, like the newer princesses, I don't even know if this is considered new since I think this movie came out in like 2010 or something, but definitely Rapunzel from the Tangled movie. Uh, Rapunzel and Flynn Rider are my life. So definitely my favorite. <laughs> okay, so next I'm taking the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Foundation powder and I love this stuff. So if anybody has like a good dupe for loose powder that's cruelty free, definitely let me know. If you just have any cruelty free recommendations down below, definitely let me know. Um, and then I just kind of pack it onto my beauty blender and I pat it under my eyelids like this to set it. So my under eyelids do not crease. And I also just kind of like to let it go on like this. I don't really know what I'm doing. Honestly, I just see other people do it. So I kind of just do it myself and I kind of just let it sit for a couple of minutes, just letting it bake and then I'll blend it all together. Jenna asked, have you ever had any issues with acne? And a hundred percent. I used to have really, really, really bad acne growing up, especially when I started hitting like puberty, like around like 12, 13 years old. I used to get acne like on my face and it didn't even look like acne. Like the kind of acne I had almost looked like I had infectious rash on my face. Um, it was really embarrassing. But after like I got a little bit older and like later into high school, I didn't have acne as bad. And now I only really get it if I'm like stressed out or on my period or something like that. Like I don't really get acne too much anymore, but I definitely get acne if I'm stressed. When I was younger, I definitely had issues with it. 
Um, it kind of just went away over time. So I never really had to go on like intense acne treatments or anything. There was an acne treatment that I did go through for a while, but I don't remember what it was called. It was like a three-step acne treatment and that really helped soothe the acne and make it go away because I actually had it like on my whole body, especially on my back. Like I would get acne so bad on my back that like I couldn't even wear clothes because it hurt so badly. So I definitely have had a fair share of bad acne but luckily I don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of just blend everything out really well. Sometimes I'll just dip my brush back into powder and I'll put some more on my face. I don't let it sit for too long because my skin's super dry, so if I let it sit for too long, then my skin starts looking like patchy. But as you can see, it like blends everything together really nicely, so the blush doesn't look like as intense as it was. All right, so I've had a lot of questions about what I use for my eyebrows, and I hate to disappoint, but I use eyeshadow for my eyebrows. I use the pedophile palette, unfortunately. My parents got me this James Charles palette two years before all of the allegations came out about him. Do not support James Charles and do not buy this palette, but I'm gonna use it because I have it. So I have started using, since going blonde, I've started using this color up here for my eyebrows, but I used to use this like reddish brown color when I had red hair. But honestly, I kind of just changed my eyebrow color to whatever I'm feeling that day. So I just dip this like eyeliner brush into the powder and then I just line my natural eyebrows. I don't do anything fancy because I just don't care enough to do it. Like do all the fancy stuff where I like make it look all faded and nice and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I've just always used eyeshadow or like a eyebrow crown or whatever. So I just fill it in and then I'll take like a little spoolie and I'll just like spool it in to make it look a little bit more natural like this. And then I'll just kind of blend it with my finger to make it look nicer. But I like to have darker eyebrows with blonde hair. I know some people don't like that, but I like having darker eyebrows with blonde hair. Next question is from Goofy Binks and it says, any tips on how to deal with anxiety or adulting in general? And once again, I feel like I do not have the correct answer for you because I have extremely bad anxiety. Like so bad that it's to the point where I don't even leave my house unless I absolutely have to. Honestly, I, I don't really have an answer for you. When I'm having a panic or an anxiety attack, I've noticed what helps me is taking a bath and it's become really bad for my skin as I take so many showers and baths to calm down from my anxiety that I've started getting incredibly dry skin um, and it's been kind of bad for me so I'm trying to not do that as much. Whenever I'm having an anxiety attack, I try to do things that will like distract me from my brain. So like a bath, ASMR, listening to music, editing, cleaning, I try to do something to distract myself. Um, and that's why I think like working so much works for me and my lifestyle because my anxiety is so bad that working a lot really distracts me from my life. I don't know if that's bad or not, but honestly, if, you, if it's like getting really bad, like therapy and finding a doctor that will help you is the best option. I have a hard time going to therapy myself because I don't like talking to people. I hate to give you advice that I'm not even taking for myself. Next question is from GX Illy and it says you're big three. So I don't know much about like star signs and stuff, but I am a Libra sun, Virgo rising, Sagittarius moon. Um, and I just learned that like a couple months ago. So I don't know the significance in all of those things, but if you're into star signs, I'm sure you are probably reading me to filth right now. I don't know. But yeah, Libra sun, Virgo rising, Sagittarius moon are my big three. All right, so the next question I got asked was my favorite makeup palette. And unfortunately, like I really do like this James Charles palette. So once I run out of this, I need to find, sorry, the cars are outside, but I need to find a palette that I like just as much as this one. Um, I don't really buy makeup that much. Like I kind of just buy what I need. So I don't have tons of makeup palettes. I literally just have like this one and then some like ones I've gotten as like gifts and stuff, so. So I think the makeup look that I'm gonna go for today is going to be like a reddish orangey look because I'm just going to be wearing this shirt and I wanted to wear red lipstick. So I am just going to start doing my makeup. Normally what I do is I just take a really light color. So I'm gonna take this really light orange color and I'm just going to put it all over my lid. So I always just start with a light color no matter what color scheme I'm going for. So I'll just choose what color scheme I wanna do for that day. And I'll start with a really light color in that like color range. So since I'm doing like an orangey red look, I'm gonna pack some light orange onto my eyelid like that. 
And then there's like a bunch of colors kind of in this area that all kind of go nice together. So now I'm going to take like this darkish orange right here and kind of just start putting it on like my outer corner and I kind of just start blending it in. I just like to blend a lot of different colors together. And you may not notice much of a difference, but it is nice to gradually blend colors instead of having like one light and one dark. It's nice to like gradually go from light to dark and like blend them all together. I've noticed that it makes it look a lot better. But like I said, I, I'm not like amazing at makeup, I would say. I just kind of do what I like. And now for the eyelid color, I like to use a like sparkly color for my eyelid. So I'm probably going to use either this like sparkly reddish tone or this sparkly gold right here. What I do is take this e.l.f. setting mist and I spray my eyeshadow brush down, get it really nice and saturated on there, and then I kind of just like pat it onto my eyelid. See, I don't know if you can see it very well. And then sometimes I put it in my inner corner too because I like when the inner corner is like sparkly. And this is what I do every single time, like no matter what color, I use like a light color, a darker color, and then I take like a sparkly color. What it looks like, and then after I do that, I take the darkest color, whether it be like a dark brown, a black, whatever. I'm gonna take this really dark red right here, and I'm going to put it just like out in this corner, and I'm just going to like really blend it in, trying not to like cover up the sparkle that I just did but I do like to blend the sparkle with the dark color together. And then this is not as dark as I want it, so I'm going to take like this darkish reddish brown and I'm even going to use an even darker shade to really give it some more dimension in this outer corner here because I like when my makeup is a little bit darker. All right, here's what we have. And then I just take this little brush and this white shade and this is the shade that I use as my highlight color. And I just put it up here and I blend it down to blend out the harsh line that you see. So it blends out the top of the makeup. And then I'll take like a little brush and I'll take like that lightest orange color again and I'll go like underneath and ta-da, there's my eyeshadow. That's what I like to do. That's what I do every single day, just changing up the colors. And a couple people ask me what my next goals are or my goals that I want to accomplish this year. Mainly in the past year, I've had a goal a money goal of making 10k in one month and I got really close to it at the end of last year. I got really close to it. Oh, I forgot to say what I'm doing. Next, I'm using the NYX Epic Ink Liner. This is a waterproof eyeliner. This stuff is amazing. So I had a lot of people ask me um, my favorite eyeliner and what I use for my eyeliner and how I do my eyeliner. I'll try to teach you, but I'm not the best at it. So I draw like a little line going from like the end of my eyebrow down and then I pull it down like that and kind of just like drag it down and then I just start filling it in and then I'll add the inner corner and that's how I do my eyeliner. But anyway, back to my goals question. I had a goal for last year to make 10k in one month and I almost hit it. I got really close. I got to like 8,000 or something like that which is crazy. So I still have that goal for this year is to have a month where I hit 10K in one month. So that's a money goal. And then for like a YouTube growth goal, I'd like to hit 200K here on my main channel and 50K on my pet channel. And then my goal as a person is just to try to be healthier, treat myself better, work out more, eat better, um, maybe go out and do things more and stop being so scared to leave the house. Just little things like that. Maybe driving more to get over my fear of driving because I hate driving. Um, just little things like that. I want to try to push myself to um, get out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I had a couple people ask me what eyeliner I use. A couple people also ask me what mascara I use. This is the Maybelline Rocket Volume. I have used this since I was in middle school. And once again, they're not cruelty free, so I've got to find another mascara that I really like. I'm almost out of this, so I need to find one soon. If anybody has a mascara, a drugstore mascara that they really, really like and that they like would die for, definitely let me know. I don't normally wear fake eyelashes because I don't like the way that they make my eyelids feel. They make them feel really heavy and itchy and I'm just like not a fan of them. So I really prefer using mascara over fake lashes, but sometimes I do wear fake lashes, but so I'll just put a couple layers of mascara onto my top. Pink Acid asked, do you still 
do your reading journal. I got inspired by your videos and I started my own. So I do still do a reading journal, but I don't do like a physical journal um, where I do like stickers and washi tape and all that stuff like I used to. I just do it on my iPad. I do digital planning and digital journaling because it saves money. Um, I don't have to buy a bunch of stuff to decorate a notebook and it also takes less time. Um, I can just kind of lay in bed and journal while I'm laying in bed rather than like sitting at my desk and decorating a book for, like hours at a desk, if that makes sense. Like I can just kind of do it all in the comfort of like in bed. That's why I really like digital journaling. So I do have a reading journal, but I do it on my iPad. But I really like the way that it came out on my iPad and I will probably show it in a future like reading channel video. So stay tuned. Amanda asked if I still crochet and I do still crochet. I crochet often actually. One of my next Etsy products that are coming out on my Etsy shop and I'll put the link for my Etsy shop down below. I make and made animal portraits and like name tags and stuff. One of the next products coming out are actually a hand crocheted item and I'm currently making like a bunch of them to sell on my Etsy shop. So I do still crochet. I love crocheting. It's really relaxing for me. It helps with my anxiety a lot. So yes, I do still crochet a lot. Runaway Jet asked tips on becoming a better digital artist. Um, honestly, I don't think I'm like an amazing digital artist, so I feel like I couldn't really give you an answer for that, but I've noticed the way that I have grown as an artist is just to watch tutorials and follow tutorials and just practice. I used to not be like as good at painting and digital art as I used to be. But since I've started practicing, you do get better. I mean, even just practicing a little bit every single day or a couple times a week will really change um, your art and make you better, I've noticed personally. So I think you should just keep practicing, watch tutorials, and don't be afraid to just try new things. And if it comes out bad, don't give up because your art's not always going to be good. Okay, so as you can see, I took my hair down. I just took a shower and washed my hair for like the first time since going blonde. I took a shower, but like washing my hair, I haven't washed it since. Um, I did like a purple shampoo treatment and the brassiness is starting to come out, which is great. Done with my makeup, I'm going to spray my face with my setting mist and then I'm going to apply my highlighter. This is the Mary Luminizer highlighter. I don't know the shade, it just says Mary Luminizer, so I got it at the place that I used to work at a couple years ago. I just spray my face like crazy and then I always apply my highlighter after I spray my face because it makes the highlighter brighter because it's wet. Apply it on my nose, this. I apply it on my cheeks. Sometimes I'll apply it like on my eyebrows here and above my lip. Okay, so now we're about to do my hair. So I'm going to show you guys the thing that I have started using to style my hair. I bought this off of Amazon because I have been wanting a Dyson Airwrap for so long now, but I will not spend like $600 on a hair item. Like it's not happening. Oh my God. I forgot about my lipstick. Okay, let's do my lipstick first and then we'll talk about my hair. So first I just add some chapstick because my lips are like always chapped. And there's a bunch of different red lipsticks that I like to use, but the one that I like to use the most is Maybelline. It's this line right here. I like their dark red color. I can't find it though, I lost it. So today I'm going to use the Hard Candy Velvet Mousse Matte Lip Color in Delilah. This one is almost empty, but I love this color. I actually wore this. I've been wearing this color since like senior year. Like I wore it at prom. So I do overline my lips just a little bit because I have really like white girl lips, but there it is. Okay, let's talk about the hair now. I wanted the Dyson Airwrap for so long, but I cannot afford it. So I found this on Amazon. It's like a hair dryer brush thing because I've, I like the like blown out hair look. And this has been doing pretty well for me. It has a cool, a low and a high setting and it works pretty nice and I really like the way that it works. Normally what I do is I just like part my hair down the middle and I just kind of put the top bit of my hair up and I like to turn it on the low setting and I just kind of like to do like a little blowout. So I'll just kind of take these bottom hairs and I'll flip them out like this and then these top hairs, I'll flip them under. So the bottom of my hair kind of flips down if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. So 
so as you can see the bottom of my hair is dry and it's like all flipped out and really pretty. I really like the way that that brush makes my hair look. Bring down some more pieces and I just keep drying them in like bits because the hair dryer can't really dry it all at once, so. Okay, here is what my hair looks like after using that like hair dryer. It works really, really well. I really like it. It makes my hair feel silky and soft and I just really love it. So that is me getting ready. I wanted to show you guys some new nail products I got that I'm going to be using today. So Madam Glam sent me a bunch of cute nail stuff and I wanted to try it out. So I wanted to show you guys what they sent me. We're going to test them out in this video and I'll put the links for all of the stuff down below. So it came in this beautiful box love the colors. So first they sent me their mini UV LED lamp, which is great because I like to use like UV gel glue to glue on my nail tips. It's so much easier for me. So they sent me the white one. So we'll be using that. And then they sent me some nail colors. So this is all gel polish, which is what I prefer. I love gel polish. So first they sent me their Soak Off Top Coat and all of their products are Hema Free, Cruelty Free, Palm Oil Free, and Certified Vegan. In their Matte Top Coat, which is what I'm gonna be using in this video, I wanna do like a matte look. And then they sent me their base coat. And then they sent me these three colors that I asked for because the look I want to go for today is like a dark matte red and black. So first they sent me their shade Alaska Loving, which is a white shade. Then they sent me Perfect Black LA Style. This is deep dark red. So I am going to be making a nail look with all of those colors today. And I am going to see how they work. And I'll have a link for all of the Madame Glam nail polishes down below. I really like the packaging. It seems like really high quality stuff. So we'll see how it works. But currently right now it is 2 p.m. and I have to finish doing some work related stuff. I need to film some videos. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. We're gonna do some self-care nail treatments. Hey guys, so it's actually the next day. As you can tell, um, I was so tired yesterday that I did not want to do my nails yesterday. Today is going to be kind of a relaxing day for me. I'm sorry, my chair is like super creaky. <laughs> I need to get a new one, but I am about to do my nails. I just did the nail prep where I use like cuticle remover, push back my cuticles, dehydrated the nails, buffed the nails, the nail, tips. Look that I'm going to go for today is kind of like a matte vampire type look. I want to do like black and red. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I kind of have an idea in my head of what I want to do and I hope it comes out okay. I have everything prepped and I'm now about to add the nail tips to my nails using UV nail glue and the Madame Glam lamp that they sent me. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. I like that this is really little because it's really nice for like being able to pick up and like cure the nail glue and stuff like that. It makes it so much easier. Okay, so I'm just going to put some on the end of the nail tip like this. And then I do put a little bit on my nail as well. Not too much though. And then I just kind of push it into there and push it down so there's no air bubbles. And then I'm just gonna turn this on. And it's kind of awkward, I'm not gonna lie, but since this lamp is so tiny, it makes it so much easier to just do like the really quick cures. The less bubbles you have, the longer it will stay on your nails. The last time I did my nails with this method, they lasted two weeks and that was me like taking them off after two weeks. So they definitely would have lasted longer. So this method worked really well for me last time. So I'm literally just gonna do the same exact method I did last time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue on all of these nail tips and then I'll show you guys the next step that I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to make them longer this time and I am a bit nervous about it because I've never had nails this long before, but I feel like the look that I wanna do is not going to look good unless my nails are a little bit longer. So I cut them a little bit, filed them and 
They look good. I kind of buffed them a little bit. I added some rubbing alcohol and it is ready for the polish. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the Madame Glam Soak Off Base Coat and I'm going to put it on all of my nails. And I'm gonna put it under the lamp. It says from 30 seconds to two minutes, so I'll probably do like a minute mark. And after we do that, then I'll show you guys what I'm going to do for my nails today and then we'll do the other hand too. Okay, the base coat is now on. So now I am kind of just gonna wing what I want to do. So I'm gonna take the LA Style red color and I am going to cover my thumb with this red. This is such a pretty red color. So here's the first coat. Okay, here is two coats of the LA style color. Very pretty. So now I'm going to do black on my first finger, second finger, and pinky. And then I think I'm going to do this red again on the ring finger because I want to do like a blood. I'm not too sure what I'm doing yet, but I think I have an idea in my head of what I want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the black and the red first coats on these fingers. And then I'll kind of show you guys what I have in my head. Hopefully it comes out as good as I think it will. <laughs> So I don't know if I'm going to be using the white shade today, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this red onto this like just cap that I have over here. And then I'm going to take this like nail brush that I have and I'm gonna kind of make some like red tips on the black nails. So I'm going to try my best. I mean, I've never done this before. I don't even know if it's gonna show up super well on black nails. Okay, so this is what I did. I did like a drip of black on the ring finger and then it's kind of hard to see but I did a little bit of red on the tips of the black and then the thumb looks like this. I'm not a fan of the shiny look for these so I'm going to use the Madame Glam Velvet Matte Top Coat. We are going to matte this whole look up and I think it's really going to bring it together. Alright guys, I have just finished my nails and honestly i am loving them so let me turn the camera around to show you what they look like so as you can see i mean they're not perfect i mean the shape isn't perfect it's a little lumpy but we have some black and then red at the top this one has like a blood drip this one has like a black drip and I used the matte nail polish from Madame Glam, the top coat. So if I had to give a little review on this nail polish is that I actually really like it. It cures very quickly, but I do, I do feel like the red could be a little bit more pigmented. I feel like you need to put a bunch of layers of the nail polish for it to be pigmented. The black only needed one layer, but the red definitely needed a couple layers for it to be dark. So it was kind of hard to put that red over the black and make it really stand out because the red wasn't super pigmented. Not a big deal though. It still looks really, really nice. I really like the way that it came out and I really liked how fast the nails cured under the little lamp. I'm honestly not a huge fan of the lamp. I don't know why I don't really like it. I think it's just because it's so small and it kept falling over when I needed to do things. So I do prefer my big lamp, but I do see how the little lamp would be really nice for people who are like on the go or just really want something small. And it did work for that purpose. I just prefer my bigger lamp. But here's the nails. Um, I really, really love them. Like I said, they're not perfect. This is only like my third time doing my nails at home, but this is the new method that I like doing it with. The glue gel, it's just really amazing. And this will probably last a couple weeks. I don't know how long I'm gonna last um, with these nails because they are so long and I do a lot of like crafts, like painting and crocheting and stuff. And I don't know if my nails will last that long, but we'll see if they do. I really like them. Here is what they look like outside. You can kind of get a better idea of how bright the red is. But honestly, it's the perfect color and I really, really like these colors together. And I'm very, very happy with the way that these came out. These are the longest pair of nails I've ever had. So we'll see how long these last on me. 